Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, apologies for the breakdown last week. Um, might be, we're a little better this week and maybe not fully better, but we'll be able to get around the, the complications that I had last week anyway. So the objective today is to touch briefly on um, selective dry cow, I suppose, and using ICBF reports in order to select the cows uh, that are going to be eligible to be uh, put forward for a selective dry cow strategy for 2020. Um, now, there's different criteria floating around, and I suppose there's a risk that we could confuse people really, um, but in reality, the idea is to be as uh, critical as we can in terms of selecting the cows that we're going to submit for this process. And uh, the rationale that we're applying within Chagis anyway is that we're going to set the bar low, I suppose, in terms of setting it high, if you can understand what I mean. And you'll see it there in a second when I do the um, to go through the reports. So the objective is that we're going to um, try and identify the cows that are as clean, as clean, as clean as possible throughout the lactation and make a start on them. There are herds, and maybe some of you tuned in, have already gone down the selective route already, uh, and you're in a position maybe to push that bear a little bit higher if it's gone well for you, um, or maybe you're going to have to hit the reset button and try and, and get a, a better, have a better crack at it this year. So we're what I'm just going to do so is I'm going to have to stop the video in order to, to, to show you the reports, but I'm just going to go through how you break out the cows. We won't be too long on it today. I'm also going to show you then how to record the cows um, on ICBF in order to make sure that you have good information. Come that first recording next year when you get the results back from it that you can check back and see how you've gotten on in terms of your um, performance with your selective dry cow. So this is a an ICBF um, homepage for a person and I'm just going to show you in order to find the cows you're going to go onto your profile view profiles here you scroll across to milk recording SCC okay so you click on that and it's going to open up the page then in relation to the herd and this herd is 163 cows in it and you can see here that with the jumbo number, the lactation number of the cows, obviously the jumbo number being the, the lowest or will is going to mean that the oldest lactation cows are in the, are showing up here in a lot of cases. When were they dried last? When did they calve last? Um, their drying date, and in this case, we have a cow here dried off already for, for some reason. Treatment, if they got it, how many days in milk, numbers of treatments. Um, this is their average uh, cell count for their previous lactation. So for the 2019 lactation, what was the average cell count? What was the average of their current lactation? So in this case, we'll say before this cow was dried off, she had gone through three recordings and the average of those was 36. She obviously was dried off on the 1st of July, as we can see here. Uh, and as a result, she wasn't submitted for a, a recording on the 25th of July or in the most recent one on the 19th of September. So. You can see there cows are highlighted in orange down along through it as well. These are obviously cows that are greater than 200,000. Uh, and we can see that at the moment, this herd is a, a six recording herd, six, six times a year recording herd. You can see that we can still see the November recording at the moment. Um, and when the next recording is done, that's going to push off. But you can see the information going back, highlighting the cows back in November that were over 200,000 in that last recording and then all the other orange spots that you can see there throughout are cows that have had issues with cell count during the course of the year. So it's good, I suppose, from the point of view of identifying them very quickly uh, compared to just looking at the reports that you get out. Um, you'll be able to pick up those cows very readily, and these are cows that aren't going to be eligible for um, selective dry cow, obviously, okay? So in order to, I suppose, just to show you the the variation that the level of of um, the thresholds that you're going to apply are going to impact on the herd. I'm just going to take an example here of um, putting the previous lactation to an average cell count of 100. And so just keep an eye on what will happen at the top of the page here on the left where it says showing one to 163 of 163 entries. When I change this, I want to go from zero to 100 so I don't have to put the zero into from, I just need to put in the 100 here. So we're going to put in a 100 here. You can see that the page changed a little. And as a result of that, we've now gone, of setting the bar at 100 for the average of the previous lactation, we've now got 133 out of 163 cows eligible. 
So obviously that was last year. Um, we're going to do the same for the cell count for 2020, so less than 100 average. And we're now down to 114 cows. So what we're talking about here is um, trying to distill out the cows that haven't had major cell count problems. And the AHI criteria that you'll use is less than 100 uh, average for the year and no count over 200. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to input 200 into each of the recordings that have been done in 2020. So for the last um, five recordings, I'm just going to put in 200 here. And you can see that that's going to change. So one of those cows that actually averaged at 100 and 100 for last lactation and the current lactation broached the 200 mark at some point because we've dropped to 113 from 114. If I move on to here and do the same again, we're down another cow. To here, we're down another cow. To here, we're down two more cows. And on that March recording, then that brings us to 109 cows. So that's saying that there's 109 cows out of 163 in this herd that on the basis of cell count less than 100 average for last lactation in 2019, 100 for the current lactation to date, 200 then at any one count or any recording during the course of the year would be eligible for it to be submitted for selective dry cow. Now, we're to, as I said at the outset, we in Chagask are taking a slightly more stringent approach and especially where people haven't gone selective before, we're advocating that people will set that bar, that threshold lower to make sure that the chances of cows having had infections being submitted for selective dry cow inadvertently, I suppose, um, doesn't occur. So I'm going to go and change these now just to show you what impact this is going to have. So the average of the previous lactation from last year for 50 drops us to 73 very quickly and off the top of my head I think that was um, maybe 130 or something, 133 I think it was actually on when we had the 100. I'm going to change my 100 for the current lactation to 50 also. That drops us to 75. Oh sorry, that's wrong. I just No, that's more like it drops us to 30 straight away. So you can see the impact of uh, the change there. Now the 200 is still playing a part here. So we'll just take out the 200 temporarily um, just to see what were the to what are the total numbers eligible with the, just the criteria of the 50 for the current lactation and the previous lactation. And it actually still, yeah, it's, it's still staying at, at 30 and 30. So we're just going to go. So as I said, the more stringent criteria that we were looking to apply is 50 per uh, 50 of an average and no count over 100. So I'm just going to put in 100 here. Numbers are staying the same. 100 here. Numbers are still the same. 100 here. Still the same. 100 here. We're going to have to lose a cow there as we've gone along and 100 in the March recording. And it means that there, on the basis of the criteria that we're talking about, we have uh, 30, 29 out of 163 cows that we're saying could be considered for um, drying off using selective dry cow in this herd, okay? The other thing that we need to factor in then is number of treatments. And we're doing webinars there at the moment in conjunction with AHI and we're advocating strongly that people start to make a bigger effort to record numbers of treatments where they have occurred. Um, or sorry, the actual mastitis treatments as they have occurred. And that's done very simply using the ICBF text number and texting the, num uh, the term MAST, M-A-S-T, and the cow's jumbo number to, to that number. And it's recorded then by, by ICBF uh, as a case of mastitis for that cow. And you only do it when the cow uh, shows with mastitis, not as they're treated. So you might be giving multiple tubes to cure the, the incidence of mastitis, but you're only in, uh, texting ICBF to tell them that the cow had a case of mastitis. If she gets a subsequent case of mastitis, uh, then you send in a text again so that it's identified as a second um, second case of mastitis. The other uh, op options there would be the farm software packages such as Agronet, Hardwatch and Kingswood. Um, and Munster actually have a, an, an app of it com that's come out now recently as well that can be used for the same purpose. So I'm just going to set a, a number here in, of treatments as well and just see what that effect has. So from, uh, oh yeah, I need to make that one to
sorry. No. So there's nothing happening there because the filtered list that I have currently has no cows that have had a treatment on it. So there's none of those cows have slipped through the net, I suppose, which is something that people need to be careful of um, in the fact that you can go from one recording to another and in a six-week uh, division between recordings, there is a possibility that cows could get mastitis, could have to be treated for it. Uh, and may not actually show as having had a problem in terms of their cell count because they've recovered by the time of the next milk recording. So just, um, I suppose I'll just remove those filters again now so just so that you can see the impact of actually looking at treatments. So you can see there um, by putting in one to two um, there, or even if I just leave that at zero, it should, it's brought up the treatments for these cows. So you can see these cows had high cell count. She actually calved down okay and had a good cell count previously. As you can see there, 162 and the average, average for the previous lactation, calved down okay, got a case of mastitis and has remained high throughout the season. Um, and then we have a couple of other cows there with single cases as well. And then we have a couple of cases where we have cows with, uh, that have had two cases of mastitis during the course of the year. I suppose just to highlight here, again, this is exactly what I'm talking about a minute ago. This cow had a cell count of 59 when she was um, last recorded in 19, calved late uh, and has been recorded three times since. Um, calved down in good order in terms of her cell count. So she got... She had a cell count of 30, 60, and 74. She fulfills a lot of the criteria in terms of her averages, um, but she's actually had two treatments for mastitis or two cases of mastitis in the current lactation, but her cell count has not been affected during her recordings. So this just emphasizes the importance of, of identifying cows that have been treated for mastitis and that they don't get submitted for um selective only, they, they need to be uh, treated with a trico antibiotics and an appropriate trico antibiotic as well for that matter. So I suppose just to filter on the treatment then as well, I have the option of um, teeth sealer only. So this uh, farm dipped its toe into the water last year with uh, with dry or with teeth, um, teeth sealing only and sealed five cows. And you can see that they, the last recording prior to being dried off, they were at 43, 45, 44, um, 29, and 39. And um, they were sealed only, obviously. And two of those cows calved down with trouble following the sealer only protocol. And the other cows, the other three calved down okay. And you can see um, cow did get mastitis here, as we can see, identified here by the number of treatments, um, but hasn't had an issue in terms of cell count overall. So that may or may not be associated with the, probably not associated actually with the, um, the teeth sealer only, as you can see that the cell count was quite good there on, on the first recording in March anyway. So I suppose that's the, the important thing to identify is that you can actually follow back through on these. Um, and I'm just going to show you there now in a second, if I can, it's just one question after coming in. Yeah, Harold Kingston, you're just saying there about the COW 502 had two treatments, having just had the sealer in, in 2019. So I've addressed that there. Uh, and as I said, Harold, I can't confirm or deny whether that COW, um, COW's issues were associated with the fact that she'd sealer only now or, or what. So um, it's probably something that we'd have to look back at to see more carefully. So I'm just going to go to um, the reports or the record section. So we want to record events. So as I said, it's going to be very important that we record this um, so that we can show what we've done in terms of the dry off dates and so forth. So this will take a second to populate here now with the 163 entries here. So if we were drying off cows, we'd say we select today's date. You have the four options here, as you can see. So we can use dry cow through dry cow tube and sealer, teeth sealer only or no treatment. Uh, and again, I suppose um, doing these calls with AHI of late, there are actually a few people that are not using treatments at all in some cows. 
probably more likely to be cows that are inclined to dry themselves uh, very early on in the late lactation. So kind of September, October cows that um, may be a bit more uh, kinder to themselves than to the farmers in terms of milk production and, and tend to dry off. And uh, farmers are tending to turn them out and don't actually treat them and they seem to be going on okay. Um, but if we, we, we can identify so that maybe take, for example, this cow is going to get a dry cow tube and sealer and you just work your way down through your teeth sealer only, dry cow tube only. Again, we wouldn't probably be something that we'd be strongly recommending. We would be advocating people to use a sealer ideally um, and we'll say no treatment here. And then down here at the bottom corner, we can save the changes and I'm not going to do it there now because it's going to upset the records for this farm, but um, that's how we're going to record the information as we go along. So you can dry off your cows, you can um, fill it, keep your just keep your note and come back into your computer. You can do it on the phone possibly as well, um, just to make a good record so that we have the, the information that I've shown you already in terms of going back and viewing that profile then next year. So um, just to go back to milk recording SEC, we won't save the changes we're leaving here. Um, and just to highlight the treatment here then, so sealer only uh, is going to bring us back up to these five codes here. And as I said, um, it's just important that we'll be able to do that in February and March of next year when we do the first recording that we'll be able to identify that we were um, used to teeth sealer only on whatever number of cows and how they've performed in terms of their actual uh, dry cow period then as well. And did the sealer only situation affect cows? So I suppose we would advocate that people would be um, cautious that they don't um, do too many in one go in any one year. And as a result, then you just kind of find your feet into the into the process of sealer only. So we have two seasons ahead of us um, in which we can still use dry cow antibiotics. And uh, unfortunately, then after that, we are going to be down the route of where we're going to be having to prove the, the requirement for antibiotic tubes for cows that need them. So that's pretty much it for today, folks. I suppose uh, I just wanted to go through that. I don't, we haven't any questions coming in. Um, as I said, a quick run through on the process of selecting the records. Uh, and we, next week, we're going to be coming from Johnstone Castle, where we're going to look at the winter milk herd. Uh, we hope you can join us next week. Same time, um, we'll talk to you then. Everyone stay safe in the meantime and try and maintain social distance and so forth until we try and get on top of COVID. So thanks very much. Bye for now.